This is the first time in 15 years that TV writers are on strike. They say that they're calling for fairer contracts after not being able to reach an agreement on negotiations last night. Today, writers across the country took to the picket line, protesting in front of studios from Los Angeles to here in New York. CBS 2's Lisa Rosner live in Midtown, where she has been talking to writers today. Lisa. Well, Christina Maurice, they chose this location on Fifth Avenue because inside an event was being held for the streaming service Peacock. And it is streaming services that is part of what the writers tell me is disrupting their ability to make what they call a fair living. Writers are striking after months of negotiations between the Writers Guild of America and TV and movie studios represented by the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. The alliance represents nine companies, including Amazon, Apple, ABC, CBS, NBC, and Netflix. All the companies are looking for ways, all these loopholes to just pay us less for our creative product, even though they're making billions of dollars off of that creative product. The last walkout was in 2007 and continued for 100 days. Although the industry looks vastly different today than 2007, <laughs> this was America's favorite TV show, and Americans paid for cable. Today, less than half do. As a result, the union wants higher pay for episodes airing on broadcast TV and increased guaranteed residuals, especially on streaming platforms like Netflix and Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus and CBS2 are both owned by Paramount Global. There are less writers uh, with streaming. There are, there are just like 10 episodes rather than 22 episodes. So now you're talking about we get paid per episode, so there's less money that we, that we make per, episode, per season. It's ironically, there are more shows than ever, but the writers' rooms are smaller, the runs are shorter. Union member Danny Strong is co creator of the drama series wow. Empire. So writers need to be given uh, a larger cut of the residuals for streaming. There's also stalled negotiations over artificial intelligence platforms like ChatGPT, which are capable of writing scripts in seconds. The WGA wants to limit the use of that technology. The alliance said it presented a comprehensive package proposal last night, which included generous increases in compensation, as well as improvements in streaming residuals. The primary sticking points are mandatory staffing and duration of employment. Now, the WGA says writers make about 23% less than they did a decade ago. For now, the impacts of this strike, well, tonight, late night talk shows will be running reruns, but this could also eventually put a pause on soap operas and the fall TV season. In Midtown, Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News. Okay, Lisa, thank you. And as you heard, the last time a writer's strike happened was in 2007. It lasted 100 days and ran into 2008. Most late night shows aired reruns during that strike. Like, those are usually the first shows to be impacted because they air every day and they don't pre-tape episodes like scripted shows. In 2007, late night hosts eventually return to the air and improvise material. The impact on TV and film this time around will depend on how long the strike lasts. And we'll have continuing coverage of the writer's strike on our website. You can see the history of strikes over the years dating back to 1988. That is at CBSNewYork.com.